Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be talking about problem solving using programming. Please like and subscribe to help this channel grow. Today we're going to be talking about uh, finding or fixing the problem of uh, detecting strobe effect. Now, if you've never seen a strobe effect uh, GIF, they uh, switch really fast, usually are very bright colors and things like that. So um, it seemed like a pretty interesting problem to try to solve. Can we detect uh, strobing GIFs? And I thought it would be actually a little bit easier than, um, than it was, but I'll go through how I went about trying to solve this problem because this is essentially how I go about trying to solve most problems. So I do have a GIF strobe detect uh, script that I wrote in uh, just bash shell on Linux. Uh, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, what I want to show you right now, however, is in the data folder, I have um, a couple different GIFs and the ones with one that say one dash strobe are actually strobe effect GIFs. And you can already see that they are very, usually very colorful or they change really quickly. And then zero are ones that are not strobing GIFs or what I classify as not strobing GIFs. And then I have the test JPEGs and these are non-moving, non-moving images. So you can see here, these are just JPEGs of the GIFs themselves. And I've kind of uh, pulled them all out using image magic. Um, with the convert feature. So if you convert a GIF using image magic and the convert uh, command, then it will turn all of the GIFs, um, uh, can I say frames into individual JPEG images. So you can see the first one is a cat for probably like less than three seconds uh, and then a cat far away for two seconds. So these change um, so quickly that uh, it can, it kind of has a strobe effect to it. Uh, another example is are these orange pink uh, orange blue um, boxes. This is a real strobe effect where one of the boxes inside is getting uh, bigger over time, but they're very loud colors that keep changing every single frame. So there's a huge difference uh, between each frames of that uh, colorful GIF. And then there's one at the bottom which is actually no colors. It's just black and white. The problem here is that it's changing between uh, a dark color and a white color, so exactly inverted colors. Uh, and if you do that really fast, that's also a strobe effect. So I'm going to talk about these images and what I um, was doing to try to detect strobe effect on them. So uh, starting out, we let's say we have our test data set, and here that's uh, three GIF images that uh, do not have a strobe effect, and then three GIF images that do have a strobe effect. If we were actually making a real program out of this, you would want a lot more samples than this, but you know, these are three samples um, to show you at least how the sampling works. And um, each of these are different enough that they're gonna have, each, each of them will have their own different problem sets, let's say. What we wanna do first, before we actually get into the code, let's make a hypothesis. So we want to try to detect uh, a, a strobing GIF uh, completely based on some quality that we can get out of it. So what do we know about strobing GIFs? What hypothesis can we come up with? Well, one hypothesis is that um, the colors will change quickly. So for example, the colors will change quickly. Uh, if we can detect that the colors are changing very rapidly, like every, uh, whenever I say quickly, I should probably say um, every few frames like dramatic, uh, dramatic color change, dramatic color change every few frames. So like maybe there's one or two frames in between, but basically uh, one or two frames and then a, a, a drastic color change for one or two frames and then a drastic color change. So this is what I would expect some, from some sort of strobing thing. If you think of it like um, strobing, uh, is essentially dark and then light and then dark and then light and then dark and then light. Well, GIFs might have a little bit more time in between that. So it might be dark, dark, light, dark, dark, light, something like that. But what we're actually trying to detect is this change between uh, either two colors or two, um, can I say light lightnesses, <laughs> like dark or light. Um, so let's see what we can do here. So based on this hypothesis, this is one of the problems um, that I want to solve is how do we detect it? I suspect that there's a dramatic color change every few frames, um, but I'm not exactly sure how that color change happens because I don't know enough about GIFs yet, okay? 
Um, and this is the first hypothesis I went with. You could make, like right now, I would probably make several more hypotheses, but I want to get into the code, okay? So first, make your guess about how you would actually detect it, and then we want to find features that either support or deny this hypothesis, okay? So let's save that. Dramatic colors change every few frames. Okay, so I have my data set. And you can see uh, I've already labeled them. So anything with a zero are not strobe. Anything with a one is a strobe. Um, and the reason that I already labeled these is because I want to be very clear about my data set and what, uh, how I would classify them. So I've already pre manually pre-classified them. And now that they're labeled, I could probably, if I can figure out which features I'm interested in, I could throw them into a classifier. So I can classify, for example, uh, strobe effect GIFs and uh, non-strobe GIFs based on some sort of artificial intelligence, but we're not going to get into that today. I'm just going to look at the features that I'm interested in. Okay, so I've already pre-classified them, so I know which ones I'm actually looking at. Now, the first thing we have to do is find the features that we're actually interested in. Well, how can I find features for images? Every time I think of images uh, or finding information about images, I always think of uh, image magic. It's kind of a, uh, I can't say default, but it's a very common tool uh, used in Linux environments. Um, you can get it for Windows, uh, OS X, like image magic is just a very common tool. Um, and it's very useful for doing things, like I said before, like conversions, but it also has tools for identifying information. So uh, specifically on Linux, the tool in image magic uh, to find information about images is the identify uh, tool. So if we do identify and then let's say zero head turn, then I can see a couple different things here. And this first identify uh, doesn't look like it's telling me very much, uh, nothing, nothing that I would be interested in in terms of my hypothesis. Remember, going back, my hypothesis is... Oh, my hypothesis is there are dramatic color change every few frames, right? So I'm looking actually for uh, some way to identify the colors inside the GIF. This is why it's important to have a hypothesis so you can always look back and make sure that you're on the right track. If I look at identify head turn, I don't see really any color information except sRGB. So I know that it is sRGB uh, and I might be able to use that uh, in the future, but um, I don't see anything else that's color related, okay? Now, identify has uh, another feature or another, uh, let's say, uh, more information. So I can uh, use identify-verbose and then uh, give it head turn again and then hit enter. And this is a lot of information. So uh, instead of doing it all at once, I'm going to clear that. And then let's throw that into, pipe that into more. So what I'm doing here is identify-verbose, uh, the file that I'm interested in that's not um, uh, a strobing effect. And then this uh, up and down bar is a pipe. So I'm piping everything from this command into the more command. And what the more command does is just let me um, view it kind of like pages. So it doesn't just scroll through really quickly. I can see it in terms of pages. Okay, so now we have um, the first part and you can see at the bottom, it's more. So now if I hit spacebar, I can just go one page at a time. So let's see what we have here with the verbose output. So I have the format, uh, mime type, uh, geometry, color space sRGB, which we already knew, depth is 8-bit. Um, I don't really see anything uh, too interesting yet. Here I have some channel statistics and they show red. Now this actually could be interesting. So I have red and next I can see some green and the red min is 22, red max is 211 and the mean is 107. Okay, so um, that actually might be interesting or something I could use where we detect, uh, for example, uh, we see red and then we find the next mean red value or something like that, okay? Just guessing now, just looking what features might be available. Green has a mean of 91. Uh, blue has a mean of 75, okay? And this is for the first frame. This is for the first frame of the GIF. Uh, alpha looks like 255 all the way around, okay? So it looks like I might be able to do something with that blue, uh, red, green, blue. 
uh, maybe in the image statistics overall. Ah, we have histogram. Okay, so this actually could be uh, pretty interesting. Uh, we have the histogram of the image itself, but I don't know if this is just the histogram of the first image or not. I bet it's for the first image. Uh, and we have sRGBA, and here are the color values. So we can see what well, red, green, blue, and red is getting more, but it's not actually getting more over time. Uh, okay. Another histogram. Okay, and then we have, uh, again, red primary, green primary, blue primary. Ah, here we have some background color, so uh, sRGBA, 255, 255, 255. Um, so everything is on. Uh, border color doesn't look that interesting. Transparent color also looks 255, 255, 255, so also not very interesting. So what I'm trying to do is go through here and find anything that I can possibly use um, to tr try to detect uh, some change between the different frames. So now we're on a different frame, or the next frame, I should say. And then we have our mean, and the mean, I believe, for red went down. Uh, green went up a little bit, but basically stayed the same. And then uh, blue looks like it stayed the same as well. So here, I'm not seeing very much differentiation. I could probably use this histogram a little bit more. Um, I'm not seeing much differentiation between the different frames. Green primary, those also look about the same. Uh, which means there's not much change between them. And that's actually what we would expect. So I'm going to close that up. Um, that's what we would expect because we were dealing with a, um, a non uh, a non uh, strobing GIF. Okay, so now let's look at a strobing GIF and specifically one that I know uh, we have a feature for uh, colors. Okay, so here I'm looking at identify dash verbose one dash strobe dash colors dot GIF and then piping that into more and then looking what we have here. So um, notice we have basically all of the same features that we had in the non-strobe GIF. Um, and then we have a mean in the red that's really high, so 254 red. And then green mean 90, that was about like the other one. And then blue, we have a mean of zero. Okay, so this actually might be Useful. Here we have red that's very high and a blue that's very low. Um, and then we also have the histogram again. We have the red primary, green primary. Uh, background color is now not just uh, 255, 255. We actually have some values in the background color. Same for, uh, not quite the same for the border, same for transparent color. So um, here we have, what is that? Red is zero. Um, so we have zero here, 174, and then 217. So this is almost max out with, uh, with 255 at the, at the top. So this is the first frame, and it looks like background color and transparent color um, could be an interesting feature. So let's go look at the, the next one. Just remember zero, 174, and then 217. So let's go look at uh, the next one. So now we're in the next one, but we're looking for the transparency or background color. That histogram again could be useful for us, but we want to try to find like one specific feature that um, we can use for reliable detection rather than many features if possible. So going back to background color, we still have 0, 174, 217, and then transparent color, 255, 90, 0. So here from the first frame, uh, we had 0 on red in terms of transparency, and then now we have 255 on red. So basically it went from nothing to maximum. And then on the, what is that, blue probably? On the blue, uh, we had almost maximum to now nothing. So that actually looks like a strobe. So from one frame to the other, we have a complete reversal of colors. Um, if that pattern continues, then uh, it could be very interesting for us to do detection. So uh, let's get out of that. And I'm just going to try to filter for transparent culture uh, color because that looks like it's interesting. So instead of running this through more, I'm going to uh, clear this out. 
I'm going to run this through grep and grep is a tool for filtering um, built into uh, Linux and I believe OS X. And there is a grep for Windows if you want to download it and use it from command line. So we have grep. And then I want to search for the term transparent color. Okay. So let's run that and see what happens. So now we're getting out all the transparencies uh, and there's quite a lot of them. Okay. So you can see here, you can actually, hopefully you can understand this as uh, a really good indicator. Here we have zero in the red and then we have two, five, five, and then we have zero and then we have two, five, five, zero, two, five, five, zero, two, five, five. Then we have 255 for a little bit and then zero and then 255. So what's happening here is what we would expect if we're seeing some sort of strobe where the colors are changing back and forth. The red is changing a lot. Let's see about the blue. So zero and then 219, zero, 231, zero, 231, zero, two, two, zero, 231. Yeah, so basically it looks like it's uh, switching between uh, red and blue in terms of maximum values. So this looks like a pretty good indicator. Now, what is this indicator telling us? How can we actually use this indicator? Well, what's happening here? We expect a strobe, and, and this is where you would actually have to kind of fine tune what you're trying to do, but we expect a strobe whenever we see a very big jump in a particular color. And uh, in this case, it looks like a very big jump in the reverse direction for another color. So we have um, basically red going from zero to 255 and then blue going from zero to you know, 230 or something around that. So I would say uh, if you have a big jump around like uh, 150 or 200 um, and you see that big jump going up and down multiple times, then that could be considered a strobe effect. You basically can detect it after two jumps. So if we go from zero to 255, and then back to zero, and then back to 255, I would consider that a strobe. Now, if it's just one time, I probably wouldn't consider it a strobe. So, because, um, uh, you know, you might just have a color change in the image, but it's not actually trying to do a strobe effect. There's just one color change, and then that's a solid color from, from then on. Um, but if you're actually going back and forth, it's probably an indication of a strobe effect. So we can then use that. Okay, so... From this, I wrote uh, a script. Let's see what we got here. So I wrote a bash script um, that just uses uh, identify from image magic and detects this big change in uh, red or blue. Okay, uh, specifically both together because we want to know is one going up and other and the other is going down, and then one's going the other is going up and the other is going down. That's what we want to find out. Okay, so here we have um, at the beginning of the, this bash script, uh, I have bin sh to run the um, uh, shell script, and then a little comment about uh, when it was written. The first thing we're doing is checking that we're actually entering a file. Um, I don't check what type of file it is, I just check that it is a file, but you could check if it's a GIF or not. Um, and then if it doesn't, then please give a path to a valid file, and then we probably actually need to exit. So. Let's do exit uh, 255, okay. So we're gonna exit and we're gonna give another error code like 255. I don't wanna exit with zero or one because if it's a zero, it exited without detecting. If it's a one, it exited with detecting the, the strobing GIF. So I need to give it a different code. And then uh, we check to see if image magic is installed. So specifically for Linux, I'm looking for the identify command, so. Uh, let's go over here and you can find out where a tool is installed or if it's installed by using the which command. So which identify. Okay, so which identify and you see that uh, I have identify installed in user bin identify. So uh, I can do which FTK imager and I have it installed also in the same directory user bin FTK imager. Okay, so you can use that uh, which taco. And then if there's no tool installed with, or no binary installed with that, uh, that name, then it will show nothing. And then if we echo uh, the value, you get a one. So which identify echo uh, 
uh, dollar sign question mark says whether that was a successful command or not, and you get a zero. So success on the which command is a zero. Uh, failure is a one. Okay. So this echo dollar sign um, question mark is just the return value of the co last command that you ran. So um, right. So now we know where identify is located. So which identify user bin identify. Okay. So we know that it's installed. Um, and then basically here we check that identify is actually installed. And then if it's not installed, then we also exit with a 255 error. Um, if it is installed, then we just echo or print uh, the location um, that we found it at, say that we did find it. Okay. Then the next thing is check the strobe counter. So I have a function here called check strobe C and strobe C is just a, a strobe counter. Um, I'm taking in a variable or an argument to the function, and then we have check strobe and uh, dollar sign one. Um, dollar sign one is the counter itself. I can just say that. And then if strobe C is equal to two, then the image seems to have some strobe effect. And this is what I was talking about uh, whenever we were looking at the features. Let's go back to transparent col color features. So. If we detect one major change, we don't say it's a strobe. But if we're detecting two major changes in the color, then we say it is a strobe, okay? So here is where we're actually setting how many, how many detections do we need to have to consider it a strobe uh, image. And if it says exit if it's greater than uh, two, okay? So if we detect two major changes, then uh, forget about it, we're, we're done, and we think that this is a strobing image. Okay, And then because it's a strobing image, we exit with one, which means we've detected the strobing image. All right. Now we have another function called check transparency strobe. Now, uh, the reason I say tra check transparency strobe, strobe is because uh, we're using the transparent cold color feature to detect transparency, but we could very easily use uh, what was it called? Background, background color, background color. Now you notice here, this uh, GIF does not change its background color. So this isn't really a very good feature to use for this particular um, uh, GIF, but it might actually be a useful feature for other GIFs. Okay. So uh, here I have one function checking the transparency strobe, and that would detect the first one based on the transparent uh, transparency color feature. Uh, we could write a another function very easily that's check background strobe, for example. If if we don't detect anything in transparency strobe, then uh, detect the background feature, uh, background strobe. Okay, then we have our counter. So we're initializing strobe C, which is the strobe counter. Um, and then it's if that's the counter that's over two, then we classify it as a strobe and we exit. Uh, we preset our red, green, and blue values to zero. Uh, just to initialize them. Uh, these are variables. So RGB here is just a variable uh, initialized to zero. And we have a for loop. So for line in uh, this command. So we're actually giving a command and then we are um, uh, uh, taking each line from that command and then processing it somehow. And what that does is, let's go back over, uh, what that does is in our transparency color, we'll detect each of these lines and then process each of these lines in a row. So we'll process each of these lines in a row. Okay, so then for each one of these lines, take one line, get the values, and then move to the next line. Okay, so here we're getting all of the values uh, for transparency from uh, uh, this line, and actually I could probably make this a little bit shorter. Um, and then what we're doing here is using uh, grep and uh, grep to do filtering on the keywords, and then awk to print um, uh, what we actually want to, uh, what features we want to extract. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's do this. Let's pipe this into awk, and then I think, Right, dollar sign three. And what this is doing is uh, awk by default will use spaces. So this will uh, remove transparent space color and just give me sRGBA uh, and then the values. 
Okay, so now I have sRGBA and then the values. And then what I want to do is remove uh, sRGBA, uh, sRGBA, and I want to remove this last um, uh, uh, bracket. So if we go back over, uh, I'm removing the last brackets with uh, sed, and if we do s, uh, basically sed, sRGBA, backslash bracket, slash slash, this basically says replace this value, uh, sorry, replace this bracket and sRGBA with nothing. So replace sRGBA with nothing, and then also sed, replace the last bracket with nothing. So um, sed is really handy. Uh, to remove things, and I could actually combine these if I was uh, not so lazy. <laughs> okay. Okay, so now that we have the line, what we end up getting from this is each individual line uh, with their individual values. Okay. So what I want to do here, um, I'm echoing the line, and I'm using awk uh, and splitting them at the comma. And then I'm printing uh, either the first value, second value, or third value, and then saving that into red2, green2, and B, uh, blue2 variables. So what that will do is give me uh, either the value 255 uh, for red, uh, green is 90, and then blue is 0. And then that's set into the uh, uh, second variables here. Then we actually print out what was the case last time. So the, our prior values are just RGB and our current values are R2, uh, G2, and then blue two. And then this is where we start doing our comparison. Okay, so now we go down, we describe how we're actually doing our detections here. And our first detection is uh, just comparing the values. Because they're numeric, it's relatively easy to compare. Here we have R2, so if R2, the value currently in R2, is greater than um, R plus 150, if we've had an increase in the R value more than 150, then, uh, sorry, and uh, blue 2 is less than the first blue minus 150. So we've had this complete inverse in uh, green, or sorry, red and blue. If we've had a complete inverse where blue went down and red went up more than 150, then we have an increase in red detected, okay? And then we increment the strobe counter, and then we check strobe to see if it's greater than two or not, okay? If uh, that's not true, if we didn't have an increase or decrease greater than 150, then we check to see if R2 is less than R minus 150, whether R has went down, the red value has went down, and the blue value has gone up, okay? Um, if the R value has gone down and the blue value has gone up more than 150, then we hit say there's an increase in blue detected and uh, then we increment our strobe counter and then we check to see if the strobe counter is over two. If it is over two, then we exit, okay? Now what this is doing is just figuring out how much has the color value actually changed. So if we see these changes a lot or if we see both sides going up and down continuously, um, then we we suspect it's a strobe. Now, after two after two times of that, I'm saying uh, I've already detected this major change twice, so I think it's probably a strobe. So I'm going to go ahead and say it's a strobing GIF. Um, but if you wanted to be more accurate, maybe you want to put it to like three or four times. But then again, some GIFs are very very short. Maybe even there's only uh, actually two two changes would probably be the, the, the shortest value you could, you could make it. Because if it's just one, you only have one image, okay? Um, and then we set the values, the colors for the next time, uh, for the next round of checks. So here we have red, green, blue, and we set them to the value of R2, G2, and B2 because we want to loop again, and then we want to compare the prior loop to the next loop, and then see if that's also strobing and then basically do everything again until we get two strobes, okay? Uh, and then we check, uh, this check transparency strobe is actually where we come into the program. So this is, would be our kind of like our main. Um, so the other, two, uh, the other two things were just functions and functions are something that we call. So here I'm in my kind of main, let's say my main function. Uh, this will actually run first and then I will call the functions up above uh, with the uh, with the image that uh, the user gave us. 
if we make it through all of this and we never exit, then no strobe was detected. We already ran all of our checks through all of the different uh, values or features that we had. We didn't see any strobe, so we exit zero, which means that we exited successfully or we didn't find uh, any strobe value. Okay, so it's a fairly straightforward um, script. We basically just get some feature that we're interested in, and then we compare that feature over the, the life of the GIF or over each uh, uh, frame of the GIF. Okay, now the thing is, this is only checking for transparency because we're filtering out everything else. So if your, your GIF uh, is strobing on transparency, this will probably detect it. If your GIF is strobing on background image, this will not check it because we're not checking the background feature. So this is why um, GIF detection is a little bit more difficult than I expected. It looks like there's a lot of different ways to detect, um, or sorry, it's, it looks like there's a lot of different ways to check uh, for strobing or make strobing happen in, in the GIF, depending on how the GIF was created. Okay, so now let's go ahead and try this. Um, we have uh, our strobe detector and we have our data inside our data folder. So we'll just run dot slash strobe tester. And then I'm gonna give it first a, a GIF that I know is not, shouldn't be detected. So let's do rude. Okay, so here we have checking file data slash zero, uh, root dot gif and then identify command found at user bin identify that was using the which command and then we have no strobe detected. So let's do another one uh, that shouldn't be detected just to make sure. So jerk. Okay, no strobe detected. So that's what we expect. Okay, now let's do the ones that we know are strobe uh, images. So strobe images data, and then I'll just do, what's the first one? Uh, cat, strobe, cat, no strobe detected. So we have a cat, uh, no strobe was detected, and I'm pretty sure I know the reason because uh, there's only one major change, and I don't even know if that's using transparency. We can check that in a second. Uh, here, let's do the next one, which is colors, and this is what I actually expect. Okay, so this is the one we found transparency on. So now, yep, it went into our loop. We're printing the prior, which is zero. This is the kind of initialized prior. And we have a current, uh, which is changing a lot. Um, actually, I just realized setting the prior values to zero uh, might actually increment our counter early. So I might need to check that. So we have our blues at uh, 217 uh, from zero. That would probably be one increment. And we have our prior, the next current is red 255 and blue zero. So here we have an increase in red detected and it looks like the counter is still okay. Um, yep, and then we have some more frames that didn't really change and then we have another big change. So increase in blue detected and the check strobe got to two. So the image seems to have a strobe effect only based on the transparency feature, okay? So then, uh, Let's go one more, and this one um, I know is not gonna work because it's not using transparency. So this is dark light. This one uh, didn't actually have colors. It was the black and white one. I don't think it was using transparency for it. Yeah, so no strobe detected. So there are three strobing uh, GIFs. The problem is only one of them is using transparency to do the strobe effect. The other ones are using um, something else. I'm not sure yet, I haven't really looked at them. Um, but I think one of them is using background, uh, which is another function we need to put in. And then one of them, uh, I don't really know yet. So the ideal situation is that we could actually pre-process all of these images first. So that way we can look at one feature. So um, if there was a way to flatten all of the GIF images or make them, uh, you know, some sort of uniform RGB uh, value, if we can do that first, pre-process them and then use our detection algorithm uh, to find out if they're strobing, that would be the best case. Um, so I'm still thinking about what that would be, but I'm pretty sure we can do that if we just convert them all to kind of a simplified version, basically, of GIF. Um, so it, the whole point of this is um, to figure out what uh, your goal is. So here, our hypothesis was dramatic color changes 
uh, every few frames can be used to, to detect um, uh, strobing GIFs, okay? So dramatic color changes every few frames. That is true. At least for the transparency, we've shown that that is possible, right? So we can extract the transparency colors, color features, and then use them to classify at least one, uh, one type of GIF um, that way. So here we came up with the hypothesis, and then because of that hypothesis, that's what I focused on, was just these dramatic color changes. So think about any other hypothesis you can, you can think of. We have two more GIFs where this didn't actually work on the transparency. So what else can we do? What else can we look for uh, for these GIFs to be able to detect them as strobing GIFs? And that's something that I'll leave to you guys. So put your hypothesis in the comments below. Um, if you want to, you can um, uh, uh, contribute to this project. I'll put the link to the GitHub code um, uh, also in the link below. So tell me what your hypotheses are for detecting the other images, um, uh, other strobing GIFs, and then um, go ahead and look at GitHub. If you're, if you're not familiar with GitHub yet, take a look at it and see if you can actually detect either one of these other GIFs or maybe find your own GIF and try to do detection. So this is a, an interesting little problem. Um, it wasn't very hard to do. The whole point is we just have to find some good features to be able to do some basic detection. Hopefully, eventually we can find a way to do general strobe detection on all GIFs. That way we can make a useful filter um, for these, these big companies or web portals. That way um, people won't get socially engineered or attacked again. Um, so that's it for today. I just wanted to show you how I'm going through uh, kind of this problem solving. Uh, if we're presented with a problem, can we make a solution? Yeah, most solutions are, are actually fairly simple to do. It's just people don't really work through them or they don't uh, think about what the possible solutions could be first. Um, so I hope that was helpful and that's it for today. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. Also, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Your support lets us focus on making better tutorials for everyone.